Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with Warp Fire Minis, and when it comes to wargaming, everybody makes mistakes. So I'm gonna go through the five most common mistakes I see players make, and then we'll talk about how we can fix it. All right, so mistake number one that I see everybody make when they're first starting out is they're going for the kills instead of going for the points. And I get it, it's a war game, like killing stuff is fun. We just spent all the time on these models, we wanna make them work but you have to score the points. So we need to focus on getting our one, two more on the objectives. We need to focus on getting our battle tactics every round and then getting our grand strategy at the end of the game. So I see it happen all the time. People, they've got an option. They can walk this unit on the objective or they can go over here and maybe kill this guy and then that's gonna put them ahead. It's not. Like get them on the objective, score your points, get your battle tactic. That's how you win games. Um, other than that, a lot of times people, when you're in combats, don't be, be afraid to retreat out. So if you're in a combat, like I've, I've got clan rats fighting some necropolis stalkers, like that's a combat I'm going to lose. So what do I do? I pull them out. There's no reason to just let them die for free. And having that unit around later on in the game can score me battle tactics or help me score my grand strat. Like take what's theirs is, that's what most armies are doing. So having that extra unit you can put in your zone or the opponent's zone, just very, very important. So make sure you're scoring, scoring your battle tactics, grand strats, max points on the objectives, like that's what we have to do. Then on the other side of the coin, we need to try and deny our opponent points wherever we can. So if it's a, a, a map that has four objectives on it and we go first, like we can hold one, just send a bunch of guys over to that second objective to hold two because we wanna make it hard for our opponent to hold more. Because turn one, we're gonna hold one, two, and more, because they're only on one objective. So if we can hold down those two and keep them off of it, like instantly we're gonna be up a point. Like that's what we wanna be doing. So if you can score up max on your turn, deny your opponent a couple points here and there, like that's the focus. Don't worry about kills, they're gonna happen. Just do that first. All right, and number two on the mistake list, we're gonna talk about turn one positioning. And this is just really, really big. And I feel like it's a, it's a point where people feel really bad about the double turn because they're getting this wrong. So let's look at the table here and I'll show you what we can do. So turn one positioning, what we have to do in most cases, and every case is different, but we wanna typically play very conservatively. We wanna try and just get on the objective to score our max points and try and stay out of threat ranges where we can. So where a lot of people make mistakes is they're excited, they wanna go get that kill, and so turn one, they're gonna run this guy all the way up here and then run Screech up behind him. And what that does is just open you up to a double turn. So turn one, your opponent's gonna hit you, they're gonna clear that screen, then if they get that double, now they're just hitting full force with their whole army into your good stuff, and you're probably gonna lose the game. So what we have to do in this case, we'll say Skaven's gonna go first, and I'm not gonna run the clan rats all the way up here. Sure, I'll, I'll run a run roll just to get extra movement if I need it, but clan rats, they get plus two to their run rolls for their bell ringer. So let's say I roll a one, we can move these clan rats nine inches. So I'm looking down at the objective. I can get all the way up here, but before I move, I wanna check my opponent's threat ranges. And some people will say, oh, well, pre-measuring's lame or whatever. Like, they're wrong, you have to do it. Like, this is how you win games. We need to see what my opponent can do. So. Spider Riders, they can move 10 inches. So like they can get all the way up to here. If I'm on the objective, they're gonna be able to charge me. There's nothing I can do about it. So that is what it is. Um, I know Spider Riders on a good day, maybe they're gonna do four or five damage. I've got 20 clan rats, no big deal. But these Fellwaters, if they get in, they can really hurt something. So I know Fellwaters, they move six, then they can shoot six. So 12 inches is here. I wanna make sure I stay out of that but I also wanna try and stay out of their charge ranges. So if he moves six, they can charge potentially 12, which is 18, which is all the way back here on the edge. So I, in order to get more bodies on, like I'm gonna to have to get within the charge range, but if he hits a 10, 11, 12 inch charge, just good on him. Like it's a dice game, sometimes that's gonna happen. So with my minimum run roll, I'm moving nine, and I'm not gonna go the full thing. Like we're just gonna put our clan rats, maybe we're gonna put them up right here on the edge of the objective get most of them on and get ready for my opponent's turn. So we just push them all up like so to get on the objective. 
So then I have to think, well, what do I want to do with Screech here? Um, and it depends, like this could be a whole nother video itself. Um, normally I would move him up, keep him within three inches of this knot hole to keep his plus one to cast. And I want to be able to be prepared if I do win the priority roll, I want Screech to make sure he's in range to jump out and kill stuff, like so I can have a productive turn. Like if I kept him way back here to be super safe, then he's just not gonna do anything next turn, which is no good. Uh, another thing you can do, depending on what's coming, I could put Screech all the way up base to base with these guys. And what that'll do is, if they do attempt to charge me, Screech is gonna be within three inches of them. So Fellwaters, they have a two inch reach with their weapons. So yeah, they can hit these clan rats and kill them, but Screech is within three, so he's in combat. So he'll be able to pile in right after that and kill him back. But that's again, case by case, it depends on what's hitting you. Can Screech clear it back? Then what's behind that? But the main takeaway is just turn one, play conservative. Like we don't want to give them the opportunity for a really good double turn. Um, we just want to get on, tow on, keep as far away as we can from those charge ranges, make it as hard as possible for them to take the objective away from us. So in this case, if the spider enters, they move up their 10, like they can get five dudes on, no sweat. If they hit a big charge on us, like they're gonna come in, kill four or five clan rats, but we're still gonna hold the objective. We're denying them points. We're scoring our max points while also staying safe. So turn one, that's generally a good idea. All right, mistake number three is people aren't taking full advantage of the generic command abilities. And by that, I mean things like all out attack to give yourself plus one to hit, all out defense to give yourself plus one to save, and then even the bigger ones like a redeploy in the movement phase. So being able to move your models during your opponent's turn is just incredibly powerful. And all these command abilities, like in addition to your army's abilities, these, they're just the most powerful tools you have at your disposal. So we need to be using those command points. Um, if you don't use your command points by the end of the battle round, like they go away. Like you need to be smart and like save one for a big bravery test if you know that's coming up. But other than that, we need to make sure we use those command abilities each turn to, to give us the best chance at winning games. So for redeploy, it's any time an enemy unit finishes a move within nine inches of one of your units, you can then move D6 inches yourself. And you're gonna use that for things like, if they move up and they're six or seven inches away from you, you do a redeploy and the average on a D6 is gonna be three, three and a half. So you're taking their six inch charge or seven inch charge into a nine or a 10. And so on average, now they're not going to make it. And so we can use that to try and deny their battle tactics, right? Like if we know they chose that they're gonna kill this unit for their gaining momentum, now we just made their charge from a 50% to maybe 30%. So anything we can do to make them have a chance to fail, like that's awesome. And then for things like all out attack and all out defense, People, they just forget that it exists or they get too excited in the moment. They charge their big unit in and they're getting ready to kill. Like you just need to slow down, focus on like, hey, I have this ability. I need to use it to get the maximum potential out of my army. Um, then other ones like auto running six, you can use that to jump onto an objective. Or there's a lot of units in the game that have the ability to run and charge. It's like if you move six, now you can auto run six, that's 12 then plus your charge range. It just gives you an incredible mobile, or incredibly mobile unit you can use to take objectives or score battle tactics that sometimes people won't expect. Like if a unit moves six, they're not expecting it to move 12 and then charge. So just make sure you're taking advantage of all those command abilities. And then on the other side of the coin, like our opponent can also use these things. So in our turn, we need to be looking out for those redeploys. Like when you choose uh, to kill an, a specific unit, you need to make sure that you don't end six or seven inches away because you don't want them to redeploy. So there are a lot of instances where let's say my Warbringer is already five inches away from a target. I'm gonna choose not to move him at all. Cause I know I can, yeah, I can move up and make that a three inch charge. But if he redeploys and rolls that six, now I'm looking at a nine inch charge versus the five inch charge I had if I didn't move. So keep that one in mind and then that they're also gonna be able to all out defense. So if you're trying to kill this unit, just factor in your mind that, okay, they're gonna have this plus one to save. Sure, if you have a monster, you can run them over there and try to roar, but it's on a three up. Sometimes you don't get it. 
So just keep that in mind, like you need to plan accordingly and use your command abilities to your best ability while also looking out for your opponent's command abilities. All right, mistake number four, and this is something everyone is guilty of, is you just forget your army abilities or your unit abilities, just things you can do. Um, it's always gonna happen, so the best thing we can do, make yourself some little gaming tokens. So things like Mystic Shield or Flaming Weapon, or if you have an ability that gives yourself minus one to be hit, you really need to just make a little token, and when it happens, put it down on the board next to the unit. Um, I don't care if you've been playing for 30 years or you've been playing two games, like you're gonna forget things. And when you do, to help yourself remember, like don't go back and fix it. Like if you, or your opponent did all these attacks, they did a bunch of damage and killed your main piece, then you go back and like, oh man, I forgot I had Mystic Shield. Like just let it go. Like let that burn in. Just human nature, we always remember the negative things better than the positive. So that one time you forgot that and it cost you the game, just let that sink in, let it marinate. And you're gonna remember better next time if you let if you let it play out that way. So make yourself some tokens. If you make mistakes, like don't go back and fix it, and just be better next time. Like let that let that negative experience burn in and just just be better. All right, and number five on the mistake list. A lot of people they come in and they just expect to win every game, and it's a dice game and it's never going to happen. Like you're going to lose games. You're gonna lose a lot of games, especially when you're first starting out. Like. There, it's a complicated game, there's a lot going on, and no matter how much you study on the internet or you read your book and think you have it all figured out, when you get on the table and you watch it all unfold, it's just different. So I try and tell all of our locals, like the first time you play a new army, just go in expecting to lose. Um, every army in the game, they have incredible abilities. They've got tricks up their sleeves, they do things you're not going to expect or just like you don't fully understand the impact it has. So things like Corn, their new uh, blood tithe ability for one blood tithe point, they can move three units D6 inches. And on paper, that sounds really good because they can also use that movement to finish in combat range. And in your mind, you're going into the game and you think about it, but once you actually see it happen, because they can do that in their hero phase, they can do that in your hero phase, they have a prayer on a three up re-rolling to pick another unit to move in the, in the hero phase as well, like they're just zooming. And so when you get on that table, you're gonna make mistakes and they're gonna do all these things to you and it's gonna feel bad in the moment, but it's just because you weren't ready. Like you, you didn't realize that that's what they can do and that's what that feels like. So. That first time you play, especially a new army, like just go and expect them to lose. Then for your normal games, like once you are used to playing against a new army, like you're still gonna lose sometimes. And that's the beautiful thing about Age of Sigmar. Like we do have dice involved. We do have the double turn. We have that priority roll. So every game you play is going to be different. Like I could line up my corn versus my friend's Beast of Chaos army, and we can play 10 different games and we're gonna have 10 different outcomes. I'm gonna devastatingly crush him sometimes and then he's gonna table me turn two or three of the other ones. And that's what keeps it fun. Like if we lined up and we played the same game every time and I beat you or you beat me every game because the turns are static and that's just the way that it flows, like that's not very fun. So you're gonna lose sometimes and you're gonna win sometimes and like that's what makes the game great. And there's something about wargaming where Everybody, and like even myself, I'm guilty of this sometimes. Like you come into the game and you just think you've got it all figured out. Like you think you're the greatest. You think you're gonna come in, like you know how the, the battle's gonna unfold and then things just don't go your way. Um, and it's okay. Like your army doesn't suck. Like you're not terrible. Like you didn't waste all your time building and painting these models. Like it's gonna be okay. Um, I've had lots of people like, they play in a tournament and like they get crushed and they wanna go trade their army in right afterwards and I talk them down like it's okay. It's just the flow of things. Like it's dice, there's the double turn. Like you can be the better player and you can think you have the better army and all these things and you can still lose. So for our challenge games, I'm 25 and four right now. So if you're a good player, you're, you're still gonna win more often than you lose, sure. But you're still going to lose sometimes and that's okay. Make sure that when you do lose that you're a good sport about it. So it's no fun if you go up and I had a really great game and I'm excited because all my dice rolls were hot 
and I look across the table and my opponent just has a big old frown on their face or they're throwing their dice or they're yelling like, nobody wants that. Like, this is a game. We're all here to have fun, have a good time. Like, they're choosing to dedicate three or four hours of their day to spend time with you. So just keep in mind, it's a game. Like, we're all here to have fun. Just keep it fun. So those are the five most common mistakes I see players make. Uh, if there's something you think I missed, just drop those in the comments. And if you guys ever need any models, just check out warpfireminis.com. Thanks for watching.